it's Christmas. Look at all the red and green. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm going to die. Good evening, salutations, and hello. My name is Larry, and this is The Ethical Atheist, and today I am extremely friggin' tired because I haven't slept since my awesome... Google Hangout with Brett Keen of uh, GodTVRadio.com fame. And uh, I wanted to make this response to a response to a response to a response, if I've got that correct, um, because Brett Keen not only responded to my response video, but he actually dropped me a link in my Twitter feed and on my page to go to a Google Hangout run by him and actually sat and talked with me for almost like 12 freaking hours. I think that's the longest conversation I've ever had with a single human being. Well, I mean, there were more than, more than just him in the chat. There were other people that were filtering in and out, but... Uh, he was pretty constant throughout the entire thing, and, um, first of all, when I got the link, my jaw just hit the friggin' floor. My jaw hit the floor. I'm like, I'm this nobody, know-nothing, nobody knows who I am on YouTube that's got three subscribers, you know, why the fuck would he want to talk to me? <clears throat> so, and as he put it, and I was very, very flattered to hear that he thought that I was a calmer, more conscientious, nicer atheist. And he wanted to talk to me a little bit about my worldviews and stuff. So we had a pretty long, decent conversation. We asked a bunch of questions. And uh, I will admit, I got stumped a couple of times. There were a couple of questions he threw at me that I just I didn't even know how to think about the answer, because I'd never even considered the question before. And that was actually really awesome in itself. Like, I don't feel like I was made a fool or anything like that. I don't think he was trying to make me feel stupid. I think he was genuinely trying to get me to think about things that I'd never thought about before. And whenever I didn't have an answer for something, like, they didn't jump on me or anything like that. They let me kind of try to sort it out, and if I couldn't come up with an answer, then, you know, that was okay. <laughs> But I, I really genuinely enjoyed the conversation that we had, and I really genuinely enjoyed the whole thing. So much so, we were on for 12 hours. We were on, it was uh, like 7 or 8 when I got on the chat. Didn't get off until 7.30 in the morning, and then I went to work, and now I'm back here, and I desperately need to sleep. But real quick, before I go to sleep, I need to make a response to the Ethical Atheist Brett Keen Challenge in which Brett asked me a couple more questions. So, bear with me, people. I haven't slept in an obscenely long time. So I'm going to do my best not to talk like an idiot, although I'm very good at talking like an idiot. So, question number one that he asks on the video is it basically, if you want to hear him explain the whole thing in his detail, I'll link his video again in the description below like I did the last time if you want to see all of that. I'm going to boil it down to, to the basic gist of what I got out of it, just to save time. But basically, you have an option. God appears, makes himself known definitively, takes away the possibility of evil, answers all prayers, and basically makes it impossible for people to sin, and takes away everybody's free will. And the crux of this problem is, is giving up free will worth living in a world that is now devoid of evil and has perfect justice? And this is a fantastic question. And I think I have been, been done a disservice by my education to have never been presented this question before, because it's amazing. You know, I, I, when I went through critical thinking classes, they would do all kinds of thought experiments about free will and what it meant to have free will. But I had never been posed a question exactly like this. Now, would I give up all free will for everybody forever so that evil would no longer exist? Ooh, 
Oh, that's rough. And I don't mean that's rough as in it's unfair or it's a, you know, not a good question to ask. That's just rough because you want to have free will. You want to have agency in your life and you want to be able to make good decisions. And, you know, what is good without evil existing? What is happiness without sadness? What is joy without suffering? What are, do these things have meaning without their coupling opposite? <laughs> and that's a very, very good philosophical question to ask. Me personally, as an individual, I don't know if I could apply this to a society, but as an individual, I rankle at the thought of anything that limits my personal agency in my life. And this is why I have huge problems with authority. I really, really do. I had problems with authority in school. I have a prob I have a problem with authority in jobs that I have. I have a problem with authority within my family for think people who think they're the boss of me. Basically, the instant somebody tries to force me to do something that I don't want to do, I begin to hate that person. And that's a personal flaw of mine because as people who live in society structured the way ours is, you have to submit to authority at least some of the time in certain things like jobs. So that, I think, is a personal character flaw within me, and I don't want to answer this question just based upon that knee-jerk emotional reaction. But I think if I, if I were forced to give an answer one way or the other, if I had no middle ground to work with at all, I would probably choose to keep free will evil and all. Because, again, what is, what is joy without suffering? What is happiness without sadness? These things lose their meanings without their counterparts. And it also takes something so invaluable away from the human experience to say that we no longer can make choices about our behavior and how we treat others and things like that. And I know it it sucks that some people will make bad choices. It sucks that some people will decide to do evil things either because of selfishness or, you know, whatever reason they might have. But I think that free will, or at least what we know to be free agency, is so crucial for living a meaningful life that without it, you're basically just a puppet on strings, and that's not a life at all. And I'm sure... Because Brett tends to do this, I'm sure, and I'm not knocking Brett, just, I'm just pointing it out. He tends to set up questions to lead into other questions, so I'm sure that the second I admitted that, he's going to have a follow-up question next time that's going to make me regret what I said. But... I do like being forced to consider these tough questions and, you know, having to examine things from perspectives that I never thought of before. I think that part of growing intellectually and emotionally and, you know, as a person, you have to be uncomfortable sometime. I think that to experience growth, you have to encounter uncomfortable situations and... Having to try to answer a really difficult question is a good way to start that kind of growth. But, uh, try not to get into the Pepsi. I really need to go to sleep. But, next thing, uh, Brett, you asked if I would like to continue doing a back and forth question thing between you and me, where you ask me questions and I reply back. Um... Yes, I think that would be awesome. I think as long as you continue to think that I'm good company and that I'm worth hearing from, I would love to hear questions from you. I really would. I love conundrums and dilemmas, and even though I'm not probably the smartest person, I love being confronted with these situations that I've never thought of before and trying to reason out the best possible answers in the best way that I can. I love that experience, even if it's hard and sometimes it makes my head hurt. You know, I, I really do enjoy the way that you put things. So, yes, if you want to do that, absolutely. 
One condition, though, is that occasionally I would get to ask questions back. I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now because my brain is fried and I'm running on less than fumes. But if I have questions for you based on your theistic perspective, and maybe even other things, maybe politics or philosophy or things like that, I would love to be able to ask you those questions back and get a response, if that's all right with you, man. Okay, and the last part of the video... Brett asks me, um, during the live video chat, he brought up a theoretical scenario in which I personally am at the deathbed of somebody who is very quickly dying and will probably die before my eyes very soon. That person has asked me to pray for them, to whatever deity they worship. And... Brett asks, would it be better to go ahead and pray for that person or simply tell them my world beliefs and refuse to? Now, I did point out in the chat, I think, that I thought that there were a couple of ways to think about this. On the one hand, praying for the person would be like a lie because I don't believe in God. And I basically would be just talking into the air over this person who is rapidly dying. On the other hand, this person genuinely has some kind of spiritual belief and it will bring them comfort and peace in their final moments and make this horrible tragedy a little bit less horrible from their perspective because they are being comforted. And uh, in your video, Brett, you pointed out that it doesn't benefit me and that it might in fact violate my personal ethical standards to lie to this person and claim to be uh, religious and pray for them. And personally, at that point, at least in this specific scenario, I think that situation is so desperate and it's so personal and it's so close that I don't, I don't think I would have a problem setting aside whatever my beliefs are, to comfort the dying. If it will genuinely ease some of their pain in those final moments, I don't think it matters if I don't think that they're going to continue on after death. I don't think that it matters that I believe that there's no afterlife. I think what matters is reducing that person's emotional and anguish in any way that I can in those final moments. And me personally, I have always wrestled with whether or not lying is bad in every situation. Certainly I think that there are good examples of when it is perfectly fine to lie, and I don't always base I don't always use consequences as the defining point for whether or not a thing is right, but I think if the situation comes to an outcome where no one was hurt by the lie, that I would think that it would be okay for all intents and purposes. And especially in this situation where the person is going to be dead very soon, according to the analogy, and obviously they're not going to be hurt by anything anymore because they're dead. But it will have eased their pain in those final moments and not harmed anyone else to have, for me to have lied to them. So, the second part of this was, we, we talked about that example, we talked about that for a little while on the chat. And so he compares that to um, other people who are suffering in whatever unique way, or they're suffering some kind of trauma, they have some kind of hor horrific past experience that is still weighing on them, that they're suffering in some way. They're suffering in some way, whether something has been done to them, or they're dying of a sickness, or something like that. And they might be watching my videos. And in, in a lot of my videos so far, I talk about atheism and what it means to be an atheist and the different facets of how I organize my life and my worldview because I'm coming from that position. And I would like to say 
before I get into to discussing the conundrum itself, I think it's very, very different emotionally to be confronted with a suffering person in front of you, in your presence, in your physical presence, than it is to think of a stranger abstractly beyond, you know, your window here. And I'm not saying that those people's suffering is less significant, because I can't observe them. But as for how it would make me feel, I can't deny that it, it would garner a much, much more emotional knee-jerk reaction for me to actually be able to see the person and interact with them. So, and forgive me if that's wrong, but that will probably color the way that I answer this question. I would hope, and I know that this isn't the case, because a lot of religions have certain prohibitions about even associating with atheists, but I would hope that if you're on my channel, and you're seeking out my content, and you know what I'm here for, I make no bones about it, my channel's title is The Ethical Atheist. I am very open and upfront with who I am and what I am. I would hope that if you have come to my channel, and you are watching my videos, you have chosen to watch them, that the fact that I am an atheist does not bother you. If you come here knowing that you're going to hear something that is upsetting to you, that is at least partially on you. <clears throat> now, um, Brett in his uh, challenge video asked me if it's ethical to pray for a person who's dying in front of you, why wouldn't I use my YouTube platform to pray for anybody that might be watching me. And part of that is that I don't know who's watching me. I don't have a clue. I don't have any way to know what people are watching me and what people aren't. My audience could be 100% atheist. My audience could be 100% theist. My audience is mostly likely a 60-40 mix. You know? I Demographics don't tell me that. I don't know. But am I going to deny who I am and what I believe in, based on who might be watching. I don't think I could. I don't think it... I don't think it would be right for me to constantly be lying about who I am, because eventually that does hurt somebody, that hurts me. Living a, living a lie is different than telling a lie. And I do think that living a lie is emotionally and psychologically damaging, and, and that in itself is something to avoid. But again, I would hope that if you're on my channel, my very, very obviously titled channel, my very, very obviously themed channel, I would think that if you decided to come here, you decided to watch me, that me being an atheist would not be an issue for you that's going to cause you that much distress. So, if you, if you want to add any more specific conditions to that question, Brett, I would love to talk to you about it uh, in person or in chat. Well, in person, but in chat or in text or something like that. Um, but that's the way that I see it. And uh, there was something else I wanted to tell you before I got off the stream, but I don't remember. But yes, I would love to do a back and forth series with you as long as you think that I'm good company and as long as you think my responses are worth listening to. That would be peachy keen for me. I'm not, I'm not sure how much I care about subscribers right this moment. I'm sure that once I get more subscribers, there will be more pressure to create better content and things like that. And I'm sure that it'll become its own creature after a while. But I, if I do get any additional subscribers from showing up on your channel, and I guess that's a net positive. But really, for me, I care more about, you know, the discussion and whether or not you think we can have a good, constructive back and forth, you know, however long we can keep that up. I'd love to come on the chat again whenever you do that next. I had a real good time. I'd like to meet some new people.
be a part of uh, all kinds of discussions. But, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I'm having troubles. But I gotta get off before my brain deteriorates into mush because I haven't slept in forever. I'm starting to hallucinate. Not really, no. I'm just... Blah. Alright, so, thank you very much for watching, and as always, may Darwin be with you.